Greetings, everyone. Uh, I've got my buddy Terry David Mulligan on the phone. And for those of you who don't know, it is against federal law. There he is. There's the phone. It's against federal law to ship wine across provinces. Now, this is, it goes back to a 1928, the Intoxicating Liquor Act, where, of course, uh, I was talking to actually Mark Hicken, and that was, it was originally designed to... Uh, help consumers with selection of wines in the liquor stores. Now, in 1928, we didn't have a wine industry. Uh, you know, some 80 odd years later, we have a burgeoning wine industry in British Columbia and Ontario. But yet, these two provinces, if you want to build an international reputation for your wine, you can't ship wine to a restaurant or a consumer across the border to introduce to a business person and to introduce for a friend. Now just imagine being in France and not being able to ship a wine from Bordeaux to Burgundy. So, Terry David, what are you precisely doing? Tell, tell my viewers exactly what you're doing. Well, actually, I, actually, I was going to say I'd dump this down, but basically I kept it as simple as possible, and that is, yep. there's two elements at play here. I know that the restaurants are involved, and I know that the people who are the I think it's more, yeah, I understand, you know what, I, I barely understand that cash. If you make 5,000 cases of wine and you ship 2 to 5% across Canada, that's not a big loss of revenue. It's not a big deal. And it's, it's not a big deal. And here's, and here's the thing. It's, you know, you know, I look at it, if these legislators were around 100 years ago, I don't think women would be allowed to vote. I don't think we'd have gay rights. And Rosa Parks would be still sitting in the back of the bus in the black only section. But that that's I mean that may be an extreme, but this is this is commerce. This is we're one country and you can't ship a bottle of wine to a relative or to a friend uh, and help build an industry and help build an international. Where's BC gonna be in fifty years or Ontario in fifty years if we can't spread the love or spread what we do? to our own people, never mind an international community. This law doesn't make sense to me, uh, but, you know, you can make silly sound uh, positive in legal speak terms, and the politicians and the lawyers and all the rest of those guys are very, very good at making the ridiculous sound sane. Again, women couldn't vote a hundred years ago because, you know, apparently they weren't smart enough. <laughs> try getting, the, try doing that today, right? It ain't gonna happen. So uh, we got to think beyond this and and go. What what are we? Where are we gonna take our industry in the next 50, 60 years? And this is part of it. And so I, listen, I've heard a, a number of people say, "Well, why are you doing this stunt?" And I stop them right there and go, "This is no stunt. <laughs> this is no stunt. I have uh, I have international work to do. Uh, I, I'm 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 not." I'm, would never uh, threaten uh, my travel around the world uh, by breaking a law from 1928. But 
but there's part of this that just compels me to do it because first of all the, the wineries if they stand up there are subtle economic reprisals uh, from the liquor control boards in other words your bottle is pulled from the shelves or returned or just goes missing uh, so but many of the wine and all of the wineries basically are not going to stand up and walk with me to the board they're just not going to do it however if they all did it together yeah. if they went as an industry that would be interesting if they, you know if, if, if we could get reps from from 20 30 40 50 wineries there you got you got you, got, you actually have a movement going on exactly. but i'm prepared to go with myself and josie my dog and my case of wine and walk across the border and we'll see what happens um, i'm going to challenge it i don't know how it's all going to play itself out where are you going to be where are you doing this what border where, where parts we're doing it friday the 13th because i'm headed for the uh, banff rocky mountain food and wine festival so i thought well i'm going down the road i might as well make it high noon bc time friday the 13th trans canada highway you go through drive through armstrong and you revel stoke and you go uh, golden and field and then just before Lake Louise is the BC Alberta border, I'm going to stop my car there. I'm going to get out, uh, and at high noon, I'm going to gather with whoever is there with me, and I'm going to walk across the border. If they want to come, they want to. Uh, if they want to do their own uh, protest, they can do it. I'm just, I'm just saying. This is me and my dog and my wife, and I'm going across that border. Let's let's see how many people we can get there. If we get a hundred or two hundred people, even with one. Well, uh, first of all, it ain't downtown Vancouver. Yeah. It's, Alberta border, and you have to be prepared to go down that road and then come back again. But uh, how many opportunities do you get a chance to do this as a demonstration? Is no, it, as a one moment, let's do something. Uh, I believe our friends in the media will be there to cover it. They'll, they'll certainly uh, uh, generate some news, and, and we'll see what happens. I, I've, I've been asked, what, what do I expect to see and hear? Uh, it's entirely possible that the liquor control people would just say, I'm not interested. Uh, or they'll, or this is frivolous. Or they'll, uh, they'll confiscate my wine, uh, and um, and then there might be a third or fourth step there. But I don't know. I just, I don't know what I'm walking into. What are the politicians saying that you've talked to? Uh, the only one I actually talked to was uh, Senator Larry Campbell, and he just said uh, he he was he's on actually the last quote on the show we just ran on the seventh. Uh, uh, it was Senator Larry Campbell, and it'd be tough to quote him, but basically he said, until such time uh, as they sort this out, I would suggest that all Ontario wines stay in Ontario, all BC wines stay in BC, and screw them until they sort this out. But, I mean, that just hurts the wineries. I, I don't quite, you know, I'd love to have him in my corner. He's quite a guy. Yeah, he is quite a guy, and yeah, you, you want him in your corner. But, uh, I mean, they can't promote doing anything illegal either, right? Because that's no, a compromise. And uh, I'm getting some very, this is a Mother's Day, I'm getting some very interesting emails today. Quiet, off to the side, uh, just between you and I kind of thing. And, um, you know, there's legal, there's legal, there's a heavy legal caseload uh, here. Uh, there, and there are two uh, wine websites that I'd send people to. One is Free My Grapes, yeah. which, uh, have, uh, and they've been fighting this fight for quite some time. And also, winelaw.ca, and that's Mark Hicken. And he's uh, one of the lead lawyers. He's He's been arguing this point for a long time and has a lot of interesting angles. Because, uh, you know, there's the, the guys on the other side, the liquor control of the government, they're spin doctors, man. They spin better than anybody. And they've been spinning this since 1928. I'm just tired of the spin. I might as well just go straight to it and spin their eye. And I'm glad you're doing it because if I do it, you know, I, yeah. get, hang, I, get, I get hanged. So. Subtle economic reprisal. Exactly, exactly. So, listen, TDM, I'm going to yeah. be in touch. Uh, we're going to render this video and put it out real soon and tweet it and Facebook it and hopefully you get some support. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You.